let's recall the definition of the GCD. So D is called uh, the GCD of um, A and B, greatest common divisor. Um, and we would write uh, D equals GCD of A, B if, so what's the rule? So if D divides A and D divides B, and if C also divides A and C also divides B, then C divides D, right? So that would be the greatest part, right? We, we have this ordering via divisibility, but the ordering via divisibility gives us an ordering via like size. Okay, anyway, so let's prove the following claim built out of the GCD, and that is if the GCD of A and B is equal to one, then the, G, the GCD of A plus B and A minus B equals one or two. <clears throat> I mean, we can think of examples where both happens, right? So like, the GCD of two and three is one, right? But then if you add two and three, you get five. And if you subtract, you get one. The GCD of those is one. But then the GCD of five and seven is one, right? But the GCD of five plus seven, which is 12, and seven minus five is two is two, right? So we can exhibit both of those happening, right? Um, but how do we prove that those are the only possibilities. We have to prove that they're prime. No. No. So what we'll do is suppose we've got the GCD and prove that that GCD has to be 1 or 2. So let's suppose that D equals uh, well actually that D divides um, A plus B and D divides um, a minus B. So if D divides both of those, then it's got to divide the GCD of those two, right? Kind of by definition of the GCD. But then let's decompose those in two equations. So what does D dividing A plus B mean? Into an equation or a yeah, into an equation. Um, yeah, it, that's right. And I've noticed you do this kind of a lot, but it's like kind of better to work without fractions. It's kind of better to work like with only within things that look like natural numbers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's equivalent or whatever, but I think you can get into a sticky situation sometimes. Um, it just requires a little bit more care, which doesn't make it right or wrong more. It easier or harder. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, so that means that, and we know that A minus B is equal to D times Y for some integer Y, right? But now we can solve that for not quite A and B, but 2A and 2B, right? So. Let's note that we can write 2a as what? Um, so we can add those two equations, right? D, x plus y. Yeah, so d times the quantity x plus y. And we can write 2b as what? d times the quantity x minus y, just from subtracting, right? Yeah. Um, and then, so let's notice what we have here. We have d divides 2a and d divides 2b, right? Which uh, means d divides the GCD of 2a and 2b, right? Yeah, if it divides both of them, it's got to divide their GCD. But then, 
Uh, I think maybe this could be a little exercise, but let's just take it for truth right now. But tell me what the GCD of 2A times 2B is if the GCD of A and B is one. What do we think the GCD of those are? Yeah, two, yeah. Well, two divides both of them, right? But then you can divide two from both sides of the equation or whatever, and you'll see that one is the only thing that divides A and B. Okay, so well, now let's put this together. So the GCD of 2A and 2B is 2. D divides two, uh, uh, the GCD. So that means D divides 2. But tell me, what are the only two numbers that divide 2? Yeah, because 2 is a what type of number? Yeah. So that means that D equals 1 or D equals 2. But check it out way up here. We saw that D divided A plus B and D divided A minus B. So the only thing that divides both is 1 or 2, right? But if the only thing that divides both is 1 or 2, then that means that that's the GCD, right? So the GCD of A plus B, A minus B equals 1 or 2. Cool, huh?